the adventure bug bit a decade ago when Yolandi and a friend cycled the semi-desert of Israel whilst working on a kibbutz. She soon realized that nine to five life just wasn't for her. What makes you wake up one day and decide I'm gonna take a bicycle and cycle 6,000 kilometers across the whole of South Africa, unassisted, no backup vehicles, nothing. You mean besides insanity? <laughs> Apart from that. <laughs> like so many people, I got to a point in my life where I decided I wanted to do something meaningful with my life. And the biggest thing I could think of was I wanted to be the first woman to cycle around Africa. But it started with cycling around South Africa. The Africa trip is an incredible journey, which I'd like to chat about just now, but I've got this burning question. We've been riding probably a couple of hundred meters, and I can't feel my bum. <laughs> so, 6,000 kilometers across the whole of South Africa. <laughs> what was your trick? I mean, do you have padding? Do you have like a soft seat, a special seat? I mean, I, what do you do? I have to stand up here to try and make this bearable. Well, standing up a bit helps, but there's only one answer, and that's time in the saddle. You do get to a point where you actually have an iron butt. <laughs> Setting off to cycle the continent, when her bike was stolen in Angola, their government offered to sponsor her journey. She decided to go by motorcycle. So you conquer a beautiful country on a bicycle, but that's not enough for you. You have to go and try Africa. Where did the big motorcycle journey begin? I started from Cape Agulhas, the most southern point, and I did 45,000 kilometers through 28 countries. And over a period of a year and a half, uh, it was you know, a life-changing experience. Western Africa was <laughs> tricky at times, as you can imagine. You know, woman alone going through countries like Nigeria, Mali, Mauritania, getting into the Sahara Desert. By the time I entered Northern Africa, it was the Arab Spring. Uh, I was protesting with friends in Tunisia, not knowing what we're protesting about, but you know, <laughs> solidarity. <laughs> Traveling through Egypt at a time where they had tanks rolling out on the street the whole time, barbed wire. Eastern Africa, there was trouble in Sudan. Getting into Kenya, Northern Kenya, you know, have pirates, you know, spilling over from Somalia. It's insane, but you know, the biggest thing I learned through all of it is that humanity prevails over everything. Um, I was welcomed with smiles, you know, people took me into their homes as part of their family. Even if they didn't have anything, they would give me whatever they had. And especially the motorcycling community, I realized the day that I got onto a motorcycle, I became a member of the biggest family on earth. And it really is an amazing community. People throw around the words life-changing a lot, but this really takes the cake. Yeah, it, it truly was a life-changing experience. Cool, well, before we hit the motorcycles, which is your territory, yeah. <laughs> I figure I stand more of a chance against you taking you on in some kind of bicycle activity. So should we, there's a little maze here. Should we do a race or something like, uh, on your mask, you say go. You're, you're such a cheat, Jonathan. <laughs> Showing bike balance and control through these giant Swiss rolls of A is a cinch for Yolandi. Her real challenge was overcoming a difficult childhood that led her to be an anxious young woman with social phobias right into her 20s. <laughs> then she confronted her fears, and that's when the idea for her Africa trip took hold. She first got on a motorbike in 2011 and took to it like a duck to water. I love the fact that there was a woman on that bike. It's so unexpected and so sexy. The latest development sees this formidable adventurer being coached by world-renowned bike instructor Jan Stahl the Toy in preparation for a race that is notoriously tough on the body and the bike. Yolanda, your next big dream is to be the first woman from the African continent to take part in the world's toughest race, the Dakar Rally. What is your preparation like? What are you currently busy with? What does it entail? Yeah, it entails a lot of training, a lot of preparation. You know, physical training on and off the bike. Um, obviously, you have to be physically fit, mentally fit, psychologically fit. It's not the world's toughest race for nothing. And um, you know, I do most of my training here at the moment. Apart from all the training that I'm doing, there's the book that I'm busy writing about my trip around Africa, the whole experience. Um, so I'm about two thirds of the way through the book. And obviously there's still a lot of fundraising to be done. In total, it's about, just to give people an idea, it's about four million rand that I need to raise to get me from now to actually getting to the Dakar in South America. Thankfully, I have the best training ground possible and the best instructor to help me get there. We are very proud of Yolandi because she's the first woman to do the solo track around Africa. And if she can do that, what's the Dakar? 
The bike skills she's mastered have now earned her the honor of first ever internationally accredited female off-road instructor in Africa. So Jonathan couldn't have a better teacher. Okay, Landy, I know I'm in great hands already, but just to put my mind at ease, what exactly did you have to go through to become one of the only four female instructors in the world? Two of the top instructors in the world were flown over from Germany, and I had to undergo a week-long training session, and uh, also theoretical examinations. Uh, it's a week-long boot camp of notes, but they really make sure that you know what you're doing when you're done with it. Cool, well, I think I'll probably be your easiest student yet. I don't even know how to get onto a bike. So we're starting from there. That's a good starting back point. Back to basics. Yeah, back to basics. And there is actually a specific way of getting onto a bike. Of course. So I think that's where we'll start. I'll show you how to get onto the bike. It's so exciting. It's scary, <laughs> but it's exciting. Okay, come show me how to So, it. let me show you. So, um, there are a few points you want to remember here, and it's, it's very easy. Hmm. First off is you grab the front brake. Okay, which is the right-hand side. Yeah, and then you open the gate. Which means... Level Pulling up the there. handlebars towards yourself. Oh, okay, okay, cool. So it's the side, so you can get on. So you don't hurt yourself. Yeah. Okay. If you're a guy, badly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Open the gate. You have the front brake, so the bike doesn't go anywhere. Cool. You keep your shoulders parallel to the handlebars, and then you basically swing over, looking up, and you straighten up again. That looks so cool. Easy it's enough. just like in the movies. That's why they make it look so cool. Okay, Easy I think enough. I can do that. <laughs> Good, your cool. turn. Awesome. So. Okay. Front brake first. Yes. Open the gate. Open the gate, looking up, swing over. Look into the distance so you look cool. Looking up. And you straighten up. I'm a natural. And I'll ride off into the distance, but Perch, teach me how. <laughs> when she's not coaching TV presenters, Yolandi has launched a crowdfunding campaign to raise the money she'll need to get to the Dakar in 2017. Directly linked to the launch of her book, if you'd like to support her campaign, then you could check out our top billing website for details. Woo. Hey, what a Perfect. feeling, man. I hardly yeah. went very fast, but you get that sense of freedom and power, and I can totally get it. You're I totally an understand it. natural. I want more. I want more. <laughs> I think you need to take me around for a little bit of a ride. Yeah, I'll show you around. You keen? Yeah. Please, please, open the throttle. Don't let anybody ever tell you what you can and cannot do. You've got a dream. Go get it, period. <laughs>